<laughs> let's get into a story uh, that's gr- gaining a lot of traction this week. You recently sat down with Jalen Brown, and he gave his opinions on what went wrong last year with the Celtics, and then he kind of tried to backtrack on those on those comments. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to us a little bit about the the sit down with Jalen and and what you see for the Celtics as well this season. Um, so I was with him down the street at the Barclays Center. Uh, at uh, I was actually doing uh, some color commentating with Bowler TV uh, during the high school tournament over at uh, Barclays Center. South Shore was the local team there. Uh, had some other teams there as well. And, uh, you know, during one of the games, I was trying to get him on the broadcast. You know, while we were doing the broadcast, I got to give my guy, Uncle, 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 excuse me, a shout out because, you know, he was the play-by-play guy. But basically, Danny Green came on. Uh, Jalen didn't want to go up to where we were. So I said, all right, bet I'm going to come to you, Dan, and uh, at halftime we'll sit and we talk. And uh, he was like, all right, cool. So we sat, we talked. Uh, you know, he said some things about Kyrie Irving. Kyrie's a local guy here, and, uh, yeah. you know, I know Kyrie. I've covered Kyrie since 2013, and personally, you know, I get tired of just hearing all of the bad p- press about him. That's not my dealings with Kyrie, but everybody's yeah. dealings are different. And, yeah. You know, and I, and I, 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 you know, had a candid conversation with Jalen, and, you know, Jalen has said that those uh, comments were taken out of context, and, you know, uh, I understand his point of view um, because you signed through 2024, and uh, you know you you gotta you gotta you say that and you own up to it. You gotta sit in sugar honey iced tea for about three four years. Right. Yeah. I don't <laughs> I don't blame him. People have often you know when a narrative is made and when ag- people aggregate things, the narrative begins to be certain things when people put it out there. One of the things that people put out there was the whole toxic thing about Kyrie. I don't think that's true. For you, what do you say to people that question your heart and his ability to play the game of basketball? Everybody gonna have their own opinion. You know what I mean, I don't think Kyrie cares too much. You know what I mean? Maybe he does, and maybe he shouldn't care as much as he does. You know what I mean? He's Kyrie Irving at the end of the day. Um, nobody's perfect. Um, Kyrie, a lot of the blame was undeserved. It wasn't his fault that you know certain guys to take a step back. It wasn't his fault that nah, 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 that was the front office and the coach's fault. He get a lot of that blame because he was a star, but. Uh, a lot of that should be on the organization and on the coaching staff, to be honest. Um, so it's in the past. Kyrie is in a better place in Brooklyn to where his roots is. I think he'll be fine. You know, and when he said it to me, you know, it was honest. Like, I, I don't have a beef with him. Yeah. He's 23 years old, and uh, I understand the business. And, um, you know, I was, I've was i been doing radio today. I was on WEEI in Boston today, you know, discussing it. You know, yeah. they actually asked for my audio. I shared it with him, and, you know, he said it. But I get it. <laughs> I get it, and um, but it was cool to kind of just see that level of candor uh, yeah. that he had, uh, despite you know how people felt in Boston. But the the, the other caveat in that is I, I'll add, um, what he said was nothing that hasn't been said. Danny Ainge came out and said it was our fault that we didn't retake Kyrie. But you know I'll add that Jalen Brown also said you know whenever an All Star is in an equation like that, they get blamed. Like Kobe would get blamed. Uh, yeah. You know Michael would get blamed. Uh, LeBron would get blamed. Like that's part of being an All Star. Right. Yeah. And so I, I think he, I think he spoke mo- a moment of truth. It just sometimes yeah. in, a, in a we got to keep it real, but also be PC culture. Everybody doesn't want to receive what was said. Yeah. But the irony in it is, is, as you mentioned, other people have spoken on this because Terry Rozier during the offseason had made the same kind of comments. Yeah. It wasn't just on Kyrie. It was everyone. Right. Um, you know, Brad Stevens has openly said, I didn't handle it the right way. So I, I, I don't understand him really backtracking, but at the same time, as you mentioned, he got the new deal. He's just trying to keep it calm. I don't want any issues here. They're off to a great start as well. And I, I'll add this. I, 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 I'm, you're no dummy. I'm no dummy. I know when I sat down with Jalen and he said what he said, <laughs> um, I, I'll tell you that, the Celtics had a five-day layoff. He said that to me on Saturday. I wrote the, I, I sent it to my intern. I got the transcript back Sunday. I wrote it Monday afternoon. The New York Daily News wrote about it, and then it spiraled from Monday to Tuesday. Yeah. So you know, in that in that situation, I look at um, the fact that. The Celtics weren't active, so you needed something to talk about. Yeah, a little buzz up. And here's the crazy part. So the Celtics played in Dallas last night. I looked at their schedule. Between now and the end of the year, ironically, they play the Hornets. So that means now they're going to ask Terry Rozier about it. Right. Mm-hmm. Then they play Cleveland. So that's Celtics-Cleveland. That's going to be more talk. Yep. 
Um, on Christmas Day, I forget who they play, but then they play this by New Year's Eve. They play the Hornets again. And between that, I think their home game on Saturday is against the Detroit Pistons. I was just looking at the schedule. So yeah, there's so a lot of there's going to be a lot keep, more Kyrie conversation yeah, right. between now and then. But I just know I'm not a liar, so I had to say what I needed to say, and I still respect Jalen. No, absolutely, it was it was great uh, journalism, you know, and reporting on your end. It had nothing to do with that. It, I, like you said, it kind of just spiraled out. Sure, and, and I, I think, think that even with the with the with the Celtics, I'm sorry, um, you know, a lot of people forget. Like it was it was kind of just like everything kind of happened all at once. You know, mm -hmm. it was like all right, Kyrie gets hurt, Gordon Hayward gets hurt, and everybody kind of plays up. But that's, you know, that's the Brad Stevens things. He can get the young guys going and moving. So he never realistically dealt with a superstar yet. No, and, then and you Brad come back Stevens. And bring Kyrie back. And now it's like we got to readjust and do everything all over. And Brad Stevens and Gordon Hayward had a familiarity from the Butler days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, He's low profile anyway. Yeah. And then I also. But it's a different relationship there, too. Yeah. And I'll add this you know, Kyrie knew that LeBron was not returning to Cleveland. He requested a trade, and I said this on the radio today. I said, um, Kyrie knew LeBron wasn't coming back. He requested a trade. Boston wasn't where he wanted to go, so that wasn't really his team. Anyway, yeah. You look at you look at free agency, right? In baseball, Kurt Flood made it fashionable to control your destiny uh, to where you wanted to go. Um, you look at LeBron James, um, and you know him taking his talents to South Beach was controlling the destiny that he wanted, and he's hated for it. By the same token, Kyrie came to Brooklyn, uh, a team that he grew up watching in New Jersey, and mm -hmm. you know told me he you know he thinks the world of Jason Kidd and more, and you know he took control of his destiny. So I, I think at the end of the day, he made a choice that was best for him and his family. Yeah. And uh, Boston is just a different animal because they're so passionate about their sports. Um, and I also think that with Kyrie, um, Kyrie made the choice um, to, you know, in a press conference say, um, you know, I'll return if you have me. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, right. but, you know, when asked if he was returning, I'll come back if you have me. And I think that that whole thing is um, complex, a complexity yeah. for Celtics fans. And we also got to look at the, the media, too, because, like, you, you know, earlier, you know, we could say something about somebody, and then that's it. Then it just catch on, and, and now that's the, the narrative, you know what I'm right. saying, uh, uh, of this guy. So now yeah. with two, three reporters in Boston say, oh, Kyrie's this, 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 and that. Now, oh, damn, you know what? Yeah, because he did leave Cleveland just high and dry, and he did, you know. And, right. you know, I'll add, um, when, I did the, when I was on WEEI this afternoon, uh, after I went off, you know, the, the hosts were like, what do you think about this? And then and he says, you know, if you really think about it, we have the audio. Jalen said it, right? He's yeah. like, but then he says one thing to New York, and then he says something else to Boston to refute it. He's like, well, what did you think? You know, New York wasn't going to talk to Boston? Like, it just it, it, it carried over, and it was just a back and forth. But from my perspective, it's done. I'm not yeah. saying after today, I'm not saying anything right. else publicly about it. You know, I was interviewed by USA Today about it. Uh, I talked about it on the radio, and you guys get the last on camera. But, yeah, yeah man, I, I wish Jalen uh, Brown lo nothing but love. I want to see him be successful. If you read the article, he talked about more than just Kyrie Irving. Like, we talked about Jamal Crawford. We talked about that game last Thursday against the Sixers, yeah. what he could have done differently. Um, we talked about uh, the perception of Kimba Walker, and say, he said he was a first-class guy. He told me, you know, he worked out with Marcus Smart, being with Team USA, and had a, yeah. a rapport with Kimba, having played in Team USA. Like, check the article out; it's doing numbers. But you know, of course, Kyrie, that part is going to be the focal point, and Kyrie's not playing, so yeah. that adds another dimension to it too. And it sucks too because it's like you, when you get these guys to sit down, you want them to be open and, and just honest and be able right. just forthcoming about everything. And it's like, yo, you can get one, say one thing, and then it's just going up into a whirlwind. And now it's like, I'm not even going to sit down no more. I can't, you can't even say nothing. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. It's a slippery slope. Um, you know, I had Rick Buecher on my podcast, Scoopy Radio, which is available on all platforms. Did 3.5 million streams last year. Um, and Tell him, come on, man, get in the resume, man. Because hey, yeah, you, 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 you do too humble sometimes. Let him know, you, man. You slid that in there real quick. Cool, right? Man, it was smooth how he did it, but yeah. Last year, you know what I'm tell saying. Him, tell him, like, give him the numbers, man. I mean, like, three point, scoop, Scoopy Radio 3.5 million streams. It's doing serious numbers exactly. out here, man. We, yeah. um, the podcast has had anybody from Charles Barkley to The Voice of Siri to Mark Cuban to DJ Khaled to... Uh, A who's who. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean... Basically. Um, 
Oh, we just lucky we can get scooped. Right, so, right. I, you know, I, come one last to question on the topic, and we're gonna transition off. It. <laughs> yeah. Because you've known Kyrie, you, you, you've you know interacted with him so much over the past what seven years, eight years. What were your thoughts on his recent comments after he was booed um, in Boston, and he came out and basically said, you know, I pay, I played this game for the purity of the game, and not you know for the quote unquote entertainment and the fans, because it, that was that wasn't taken well by a lot of people. What were your thoughts knowing him? And understanding him probably better than most people who just read the comments in the in the Instagram uh, post. I think Kyrie, like Kevin Durant, um, are, are calling people out for mm. stuff that's going on. And I think that Kyrie said how he felt. And you know, some people are going to exploit that and say he's sensitive, uh, particularly because he didn't play in Cleveland that night, that one night, and then didn't play in Boston. But then was at the home game at, at Barclays Center, you know, so that's open for interpretation for a myriad of people. Um, I just think Kyrie's different. Um, I think Kyrie is we different. You know that he's, you know, with the whole earth is uh, <laughs> flat yeah, and stuff. Yeah, he's different. <laughs> he's different. And I think that um, that level of just different is, is just different. I can't really say it the other way, but I, I, I think um, – I think he just he, he and Kevin Durant are both similar, and they just want to play basketball. All the business and the, and the yeah. legalities that go with it, and you can't though. It's That's taxing. The thing. You kind you kind of can't. Yeah. You just you don't have a choice. Yeah. The stuff is is it's gonna be there. You're gonna you gotta come to the media. You gotta come to that podium at, at some point or another. You know the business is a big part of it. It would be nice, you know, yeah. for the players if it was just about basketball, but it's not. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than Nino Brown. You know. Yeah, and I, so I, I think when I saw to answer your question, I, I was on I was I was um, I was on Amtrak headed to Philly for Thanksgiving. I was going to see family out there, and I saw it and I said, "Ooh," um, and because I knew they had a home and home, so that was Wednesday, and then that Friday they played yeah. at Barclays, and I remember it was SpongeBob Day, and they had right. the old Biggie night. Um, he said how he felt. I, again, it goes back to my premise earlier when I said, you know, we live in a culture where we want people to keep it real but be PC at the same time. Yep. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Pick one. Then when yeah. he's honest, you hate him. And, I, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, think, I, think, I think there's a level of um, things that are seen and unseen uh, as yeah. it relates to how people deal with him. I think particularly him, his dad having a, a, a legend uh, in New York City, being from the Bronx, being from the Mitchell Houses. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and his dad's, you know, technically he's a second generation ball player. You know, he grew up with Mario Ellie. He got, uh, Ross Strickland is his godfather. And, um, you know, a guy who grew up in the suburbs of West Orange and then was still playing city ball. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he's, he's a suburban kid with a city game uh, and, a mental health, and a mental health era. Um, and I think um, he's just different. I think that a lot of people can't relate to him because they can't place him. Is he a hood kid? Is he a, right. is he is he a is he a is he a suburban kid? Is he too smart for his own good? Like people have these labels that they speak of publicly yeah. or privately, and I think that uh, when you're in a situation like him, like you said, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yep. And I think you know even the level of I remember you probably remember when when Kyrie was a Cav and. Um, you know, there was this question about LeBron and being a father figure, and his response was, Jared Irving Irvin is my, is my father. Yeah, like, what did you want him to say in yeah. that situation? Like, yeah. maybe had you said big brother or something, yeah. when you it, thought it's a father? Just, it's, it's, I got a father. First of all, you ain't that much older than me anyway. Right. Like, how you going yeah, to... It's, 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 I think Kai's, I think 27 or, tw 27 or 28 at this point. Yeah. LeBron and I are the same age, so, you know, there's a, there's a difference there, but not by much. That's still big brother, little brother. Right. Yeah. I just think they don't know how to place him, and when I think of that situation, Situation. I think that's why it's easy to place him in that Kobe box. Yeah. They're two different games, uh, but they both were that kid who had the city and suburban upbringing yeah. and had fathers who played in the league and were just very ultra smart. Like they're students of the, the game of basketball. It's just different. This is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought.